The Sesh Podcast, episode 119, take one. Welcome back to The Sesh. I'm Kendall Ray. And I am Janelle. Welcome back to this beautiful day. Yeah, thank you for holding my hand. I don't know why it was out like that. We are the hosts of this podcast, yep. folks. The greatest podcast Somehow. in the world. That's, That's right, right, baby. This is it's the Dylan here on The Sesh. <laughs> okay, so basically what happened was... What's her name on... T- what's her actual name? We need to give this girl a shout out. I actually don't know her real name. I just know her by Sue Dillon. <laughs> there is this TikToker who creates incredible prank calls I would under the love name to Sue get her Dillon on our show. If we can find, if she'll agree, I'll fly her out. I'll fly her out. I'll fly <laughs> the woman out. She sounds like a nice girl. Yeah, what's her freaking username? Anyway, she's uh, a young chap like us. And she does these. <laughs> she's a young chap. And like she does us. these funny TikToks of her. You know, I, I think it's. Curly, uh, pull up. Would you, would you pl- please do the honors and pull up Sue Dillon's TikTok here? So All can- right. All right. So basically, we're going to do an entire episode sounding like this. I don't know what, because this says she only has 12,000 followers, but I'm telling you, so what? Maybe she's a Sue uh, oh Great. She deserves way more than that. She's fucking hilarious. Here she, she does these prank she calls. Comes. This is, okay, this, this is what she's doing. That high school Hi, honey, this is Sue Dillon. I'm trying to register my little baby for high school senior year. This is his third high school he's had to go to, though. Yes, but, yes, ma'am. Well, his name is Bobby okay. Joe, Bobby Joe Dillon. Bobby <laughs> Joe Dillon. At his other high school. Okay, at his other high school. I think we should try to do our own Sue Dillon pranks. I agree. So this Maybe is today if we have time. We'll see. Maybe. I don't know. We have a lot to... Yeah, yeah, this week. And we're we're clearly very distracted today. <laughs> very distracted. We've been sitting here for almost an hour and a half <laughs> doing our Sue Dillon voice. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've Honestly, we we're pretty pretty good at it. We predict. <laughs> <laughs> we predict. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> we predict scamming. <laughs> okay, we need to actually get it together. Oh, Kennel, Janelle, hey, you're here. It's the sesh, up, and we are joined by our producers, oh, right, 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 Sydney right. and Corelli. Oh, I almost start my water. Hello, ladies. We are discombobulated here. Uh, yeah, we are. Today. What's going on? Hey, guess what we have? New lighting. Yeah, I think it looks really good. Way better, Cozier. Folks. I know last week's was really off. We were getting a lot of comments it's about that. It's because we have new cameras, but old lighting, and the cameras were honestly <laughs> mm-hmm. too good for the lighting. So yeah. um, so now we have. So now we got both them setups here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All them setups. Yeah, that's right, folks. Um, But yeah, hopefully it looks a lot better because... Lighting is no joke, but luckily we brought mm-hmm. someone on our team who knows how to make lighting their Has joke. Has actual skill. Shout out to our boy, Tom. That's right. Shout out to you, Tom. Anyways, Anyways today, you guys, up? we've got on the menu um, mm-hmm. a little mm-hmm. bit of cooking mm-hmm. with the mm-hmm. sesh. Mm-hmm. We are also going to be doing some spicy topic. Spicy. I think just one spicy topic. Yeah. Right? Or, uh, we also are doing a little segment of CSI, That's your new weekly right. crime segment here on the set we've been doing great and you know what i was trying <laughs> to um, we know. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> okay if this is your first time joining us on the session this is not what judge us off of this appearance huh? yeah this is not normally what it's like it's a little bit better usually but not this week this week we're off a rocker anyways <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Also, we wanted to thank you guys for all the great feedback on our episode with Hiram. Yes. We had so much fun with it was him. Awesome. He is such a sweet guy. And Literally there were so, so nice. many comments of people who hadn't heard of him and just really enjoyed having yeah. him here on the show. So it was a fun, fun time. It was very fun. So again, we will have our episode linked below. Mm-hmm. On his podcast, that's Just the position. Right. Also, thank you to Mind Bloom, Dipsy, and the Black Tux for sponsoring yes. this episode of the Sesh. We appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, Anyways, we need to stop doing that. What like are you drinking in your Stanley's? Bleed. I think every segment we're gonna have a Stanley segment. <laughs> okay. Well, today in my Stanley's, I got a coffee and a water. Very, very good. We got Mama and we got Baby. Yeah. yeah. This is me and They're my so daughter. So cute. Oh, oh, that's actually really I usually cute. did not plan to coordinate them, but they here they are. Coordination. How many Stanleys do you own, roughly? Uh, four. Well, if you count my mini Stanleys, then I got six. <laughs> okay. All right. And I have a bottle cooler thing. So oh. I guess I got oh. seven, honey. 
Shared Stanley. Shared Stanley. 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 I'm so sorry if this is really annoying. Yeah, it probably Please is. don't click out. We'll stop um, doing it. I promise. Sometimes we just like get on this annoying train. Yeah. We we're get just off. on the annoying train for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it runs in our blood. We yeah. joke that we have an annoying gene in our family. Oh, we like actually no, do. like literally it do. Probably would show up on our twenty three and me. Annoying, like, gene. annoying, <laughs> positive. <laughs> Dustin Boston <laughs> for sure. Yeah, can't pretty much help everyone it. in our family is annoying. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, and you know what? It is what it is. So mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. life goes on. Before we get into that, though, how was your guys' weekend? Um, my weekend was pretty good. I didn't do anything too crazy. I last night tried to get these. Okay, so we, us girlies here on the sash, have been getting in to the static nail and glam netic game, folks. Mm -hmm. Not spots, mm -hmm. but we love their freaking products. And yeah. um, I press ons. Yeah, press ons. Press. If you're not familiar, because frick the salon. The salon is annoying. Frick the salon. See, we're trying to censor ourselves. Because guess what, people? Last week, YouTube demonetized our asses. I don't think that's why, though. No, I, well, I don't think I don't so either. We why. also got caught for harmful and dangerous acts because we showed pro-life Spider-Man scaling that <laughs> stupid Ooh, building. Catch. Trying to control myself. Catch. But apparently they were cracking down, honey. Hold on. Yeah. YouTube's words. mad. I don't know why they were mad at us, but whatever. Yeah. So that actually, it's crazy because our, so we get a ranking out of 10 for all our episodes and the episode with Hiram was at like a one four. or two out of 10. It was four. Oh, it was at four. Which one is the best? Ten is the lowest. Out of your last ten episodes, yeah. which sometimes it doesn't even make sense anyway, because no. it'll have like two that are ones anyway. Yeah, it was performing really well. Yeah. Then we got demonetized, and that shit started tanking fast, like, honey. Fast, yeah. Because YouTube doesn't want to push things out that doesn't mm -hmm. run ads. So we hit up our people at YouTube, and we were like, "Listen, help Susan, us out." Who Susan? Step Susan down. stepping down. Yeah. Goodbye, Susan. Isn't I she like a billionaire. Really? Yeah. Susan, what's her last name? Wajinski. Okay. That's my best guess at it. Yeah, she I'm is not a big fan. pacing out. I don't think anyone is a big fan. Pace, dog. Which, in fact, when she did it, you tweeted, bye. Yeah. <laughs> Salutations. Adios, amigo. <sighs> uh, amiga. But yeah, we actually got it uh, reversed because they agreed with us. That was a bad call. Because yeah. we weren't doing no harmful and dangerous acts. Hell no. And they were showing that dude up on the news. There was yeah, ads all over that. So... God, we've Tell replaced cussing with talking. Yeah, this like, is keeping our language better. <laughs> oh, we do God. have sailor mouths to the nth degree. Yeah, Janelle really and I, bad. I cuss more than anyone I know. Favorite word you. is the f word. Yeah, I guess I can't say it no. anymore. The f word. I don't like being censored. The session is my one place to really let it rip. You I know? agree. <laughs> I mean, I think we still let it rip. But there was one episode we were talking oh, about yeah. um, Andrew Tate, and we accidentally said the f word like every other word i was listening back to it and i was like oh this is bad we sound foul <laughs> we sound nasty like trash. women yeah nasty, nasty, women. <laughs> nasty women here um anyways okay i literally was telling a story about my freaking nails we went off on a tangent all oh, right tangent right. a tangent <laughs> um anyways last night i need tips this is why i'm telling you guys this because i need tips so basically i started using glamnetics glue because before i was using just this amazon glue it was pretty good but i tried glamnetics glue <laughs> And my nails were on for two weeks, but I wanted to change them. Mm -hmm. So I read the instructions. It says to soak your nails in soapy warm water for 10 minutes and then pop them off. Did that. They're not They're not popping off. Newsflash. <laughs> they look really bad. I don't even know if you could tell. Oh, you couldn't even get them no, off? No, I cannot. Get, I can only get a few of them off. My thumbs will not budge. These are like peeling. You need that glue removing oil that I got from Static. Oh. Oh, yeah. Shit. It worked really well. Okay. Did I hear that on there? Oh. Sometimes they. Because I, I cannot get these off and it's. No, we tried using like insane. a, like a oh yeah pick or something. Yeah, I was using um tweezers. Tweezers. I had nail clippers. I have floss picks that have like the end of it. it's like really pointy and thin. So I was like trying to get it under there. Yeah, and then I'm my pinky. I was getting my pinky off, and I just had to. You know how sometimes like you just gotta yeah. bite down hard and rip Deal it off. Pain. Yeah. I did that, and then it started bleeding. So yeah, not it's good. just a, not a good look for me over here, and I don't know what to do. So if you have tips on getting well, glue off, I highly recommend the static nail glue remover, remover. Mm -hmm. and that works pretty well. It does. When I really can't get a sucker off, it helps me. Okay, good to know. Good yep. to know. Yep. Okay. All right. So that was your weekend. Yep. That was Very it. Nice. Um. No. Let's see. Friday, I thought Kendall something horrible happened to her. So <laughs> I guess we'll touch on that. Sydney and I had. Yeah. Can you guys explain? Okay. So basically. On Friday, we were chatting it up and we were, Kendall and I were texting about something random. And then Kendall, Sydney, and I were talking, we were going to go to dinner and Sydney invited us to dinner and Kendall stopped replying. And then in the sesh group, 
with all four of us, which is like popping off pretty much 24 seven. She stopped replying on that. And it's fine, like obviously to stop replying. But then mm-hmm. it, like hours passed and I was asking you, like it wasn't just dumbass shit that she didn't reply to. I was asking her questions and she wasn't replying. So then and I started, it started at like five. A, yeah, five it started, and which is weird because we were on the phone. Yeah. You called me like right after mm-hmm. you started or stopped filming on Friday evening. And we were tra- talking about something for a sec. And then um, afterwards, like an hour later, I texted you about something. Anyways, we were sh- shooting off texts and get no response from Miss Kendall Ray. And after like many hours at like 9, 10 p.m., I started getting nervy. Mm. I was getting a little nervy, nervy that too. something weird was happening, perhaps. And mm. I got really bad intrusive thoughts. And so I started freaking out. And then Sydney, I was like, what's going on? Have you heard from her? And she's like, no. And Sydney... No offense to you, Sydney, but we don't help each other's anxiety. No, it was like, really bad. Yeah, it was really bad. So I call Sydney up and she's like, I don't know what's going on. What do you think? Like, should what should we do? Should we call her? And by then it was like 1030. And I was like, I don't know. I mean, was she sleeping? Anyways, basically no response, no response. Sydney I texted finally, Josh. Yeah. Sydney texts yeah. Josh at like 1130. He's like, hey, <laughs> sorry. That it's Are late, you alive? But y'all good? <laughs> no response. So Whoops. long story short, couldn't get a hold of her for hours all night slept horrible because i kept getting really bad intrusive thoughts that something bad happened i feel so bad and then like literally i didn't go to bed till like 1 30 which for me is very late had to take a xanax because i was so freaked out couldn't sleep could not Mm. sleep my eyes sprung open at 6 a.m and i was just laying there and i was like how soon how early is too early to start calling her oh you really love me yeah i was scared we're family (laughs) we're family honey (laughs) and then at like i don't know 8 30 I called you, no answer, but your phone did that stupid thing where it's like, yeah. sorry, this number is no longer in service, which I had done a week prior to that, which actually made me feel better because I was like, okay, maybe something's just wrong with her phone. Mm-hmm. Turns mm-hmm. out something is wrong with her phone. Yeah, and I don't know what is going on because I thought it was a very quiet night for text messages. I wasn't getting any texts, honey. You're like, Damn, I was confused. Honey. And normally, I mean, between the... Th- Three of you guys, I'm getting at least a text a night. Like we we normally talk every night. Yeah, this especially the Sush group chat. That bitch is yeah. popping off twenty four seven constantly. Basically. So I remember kind of thinking like I haven't talked to anyone, but what I don't know what's going on with my phone. It's still going on. If anyone has a tip, my text messages I don't get the little badge on. You know how you get yeah. the little red bubble on your text icon, your message yeah. iMessage icon. I'm not getting the that actual so bubble, annoying. and then I'm not getting. Uh, vibration or sound even when my volume's up when texts come in so in order to find out you have a text you have to yeah. go into the app and i look. have to go into the app and then it'll have blue dots next to the new text yeah. and then several times when i've been doing that over the weekend i go in there and there's like six unread messages that's so annoying and so yeah i woke up to like 39 text messages on saturday <laughs> morning and i was so confused and sydney had texted me and asked me a question i had no idea what she was talking about and i was like what and then I went and I saw all the messages from you guys. You're like, are you okay? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. And I randomly texted Janelle about something else. And she's like, um, are you okay? <laughs> I felt so bad. And I don't, I don't know what Josh's excuse was. I think he just didn't look at his phone. Um, but well, he was sleeping. Didn't you say you fell asleep like 10 30? Yeah. So yeah, we, we go to bed early now. We texted you guys. At, she didn't text like Josh like 11 30. night. I bathed Holly at like 5 30. She was asleep by 7. Mm-mm. I was in bed by 7.30 scrolling TikTok. That's the thing is I was on my phone the whole time I, you guys were trying to get a hold of me. Because I was tweaking out and John was like, dude, she probably just put her phone down to get a break from her phone. That's probably good for her. And I was like, no, John, you don't understand. She's always on her phone. No, I was definitely on my phone all night, literally until I shut my eyes. How it should be. That's how the Lord intended it. But I was so scared. And then, yeah, I, I woke so up, bad. finally get a hold of her. But before that in my head because again i was awake at like 6 a.m and i was like all right if i don't hear from her by 10 i'm canceling my lash appointment and driving to her house oh, you and knock on her lash door. appointment for me that's true i love. was going to but Thank then you. luckily you got to me in time so yeah. i could still go yeah um yeah so that was really scary um because it's not so like you. you're not no. a ghoster and i want to know what's going on with my phone people because i have now updated my phone i've restarted it and i went into my settings and made sure everything was on badges are on notifications are on there's no reason why it should be doing this. so i'm, I'm like, gonna text throw you, this bitch out i'm texting you right now okay text me let's see what happens want to see the cute background of my baby oh look at her she in her little mini mouse outfit okay, it says delivered see <gasps> nothing oh wait it did come in that time what oh, but so i changed was the setting to hmm. wait do it again i want to see if the badge comes up okay 
Just did. It was delivered. But see, no badge. Oh my God, that's so annoying. Oh, but my thingy drops. Yeah. Ignore that. No badge. No badge. What the hell? I know. It's driving me nuts. God damn it, Apple. I know. Come Josh on, and I Steve both Jobs. need to like go to the Genius Bar and Ugh. see if they can fix our phones. Because his phone is like, you can barely do anything. I was trying to post a story for him for Lights Out promo. I was like, how do you use this thing? It's like totally desensitized. You can barely do anything. What? Like, like shit was, the... I was getting so annoyed. Hell. And he's been dealing with that for like two months. Oh, hell no. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. Why was your weekend? What'd you do? It was good. I didn't do a whole lot. My sister made me dinner on Saturday. That was very nice. Hell yeah. And, what'd you uh, have? Um, we had some type of like lemon linguine and oh, her boyfriend, Danny crack. from Lights Out. He made... um. Homemade noodles. Ooh, mm. ooh, that was real good. Shit. I got them a KitchenAid and a little like oh, pasta cool. attachment for Christmas. And I was wondering we were putting that to use. That's awesome. It was good. And then I also, I've started weightlifting again. It's been a very Damn, long time. Good for you. So I did it twice this weekend and I am so sore. It's like embarrassing. Oh, I would probably be the same exact Like right. I did a bunch of squats and I it hurts to get on the toilet. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. It's that bad. Honestly, that is kind of the best feeling though. Except Is when it, it hurts, though? like, oh, 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 it's probably gonna hurt worse. But it's like, okay, progress. Yeah, at least yeah, it was, I don't you know, know. I need to get you strong. You feel your again. body working. You can feel your body yeah. getting strong. Exactly. Good for like, you, dude. I haven't done any weightlifting in the past. Like, or is it just since like before I was pregnant? Free weights? So. No, um, we use a tonal. Like, oh, okay. In the wall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. It's fun. Good for you. I tried to encourage Janelle this weekend. Oh, yeah, because um, yeah, we uh, went to dinner and I said, hey, want to check out Orange Theory with me? And at first, she was like, no, no, no. But I feel like maybe I got you a little bit into it. I would check Orange it out. Theory. She hmm. told me that it's basically, because I thought it was like a class. They're like, all right, bitches, get your shit together. Think of a thing. is that it like bi- CrossFit? No. no. It's like a. Oh, yeah. Sydney, trying to be in the orange zone, right? Yeah. But explain it, Sydney. You're not like competing against anyone. I thought it was like. No, like you're not. Like, you pretty much have your own monitor and like a number. And you have like a list of things to do. But no one's like sitting there yelling at you or saying like oh you're dropping too low like pick it up kind of a thing that's what i thought it was like your form Mm -hmm. sucks Mm -hmm. but you like go through like four different um workouts or whatnot but i my sister doesn't she says she really likes it because you kind of like got the crossfit vibe a little bit yeah it's just not like crossfit like workout yeah things but yeah you basically have like goals to get to different um your heart rate to like different um I guess numbers or whatever. Yeah. Rates and Try so, to get the orange. That's the whole the theory. Yeah. And so if you can keep theory, it right? there at like for a certain amount of time and then it's like a mental like your own type of hmm. competition. That's kind of I, would I could try it for that. You would? I would yeah. really want to go, but I will not go by myself because hmm. I'm too nervous to go to a class like all by myself, like without I knowing. Know. Remember so. when you were they were your client? Yes. Yeah. Do you remember that? And I always remember you to like getting mad because they wanted their orange so specific oh, yeah, so they used to do like their signage oh yes yeah their print on all their oh that's cool they were yes. anal about that orange man they yeah. wanted the exact, exact orange, orange. Yes. Mm-hmm. shit carly what'd you do this weekend anything good um Funny, fresh cute i lost my wallet which was oh, yeah, fun. Did lose your wallet. No. i know and it wasn't even like a drunken mistake it was just like can't find my wallet anywhere mm. um that's the worst feeling and then i also was going to work out this weekend <laughs> Um, so I booked a class, I booked a spin class on Saturday morning and I didn't know that you have to be there right on time. And if you're a minute <laughs> late, then they don't let you in. One minute? Wait, well, where, where did you book I mean, it? I was, I was like 10 minutes late. So yeah, bro, I guess you just go in and hop on a bike. That's what I said. I was like, wait, I was like, I was like, I, wait, I missed one song guys. Come on. Um, it was a, it was, a, it was a, just a cycling bar. Um, like cycle bar or soul cycle. It was called, I think it was, I think it was called cycle bar. I just signed up for this thing called Class Pass, and it's like a member. Oh, like a, cool. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah I'm yes. sure you've seen the ads for it. And honestly, mm. I really like it, but um, I haven't rescheduled it. Mm. But I'm going to start cycling, and I'm going to start yoga in. Mm. Hell. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're on um, our wellness journey. We are. Yeah. The yeah, classes no. are fun because it's like, got I've that. never done one. I'm afraid. I, I, I've done a few classes now. like in person, but one. I normally get weird too. I'm I get anxious. Get and I like for comparing I like myself to everyone who's classes. good. I like the Peloton classes because. You Do you still, have a Peloton? You can, yeah. Oh, okay. It's you fun. use it? Is it mm-hmm. good? I don't have this, the bike. Oh. I have the treadmill. Oh, okay. Gotcha. But yeah, oh, the classes like are that? fun. 
Yeah, because they like motivate you. No, and I there's like, a little scoreboard. Yeah, hmm. I like the Peloton, but yeah. I think it'd be fun to like go to a class just to go somewhere that you are comfortable and like know people, but not you know yeah. not where it's like intimidating. I mean, I, well, yeah. the class I was going to go to, I was going to go to by myself, and I mean, they were really nice about it. They were just like, "Hey, sorry, bestie, we'll have to reschedule." Sorry, tomorrow. bestie. Like, no <laughs> can yeah. do, bestie. Nope. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, that was a nice little good weekend for, update. Good for all of us. Hmm. Finish this sentence in your mind. I deserve a sex life that is what? What comes to mind? For me, the word that comes to mind is spicy. Don't be afraid to say it because whatever it is, you deserve it. And Dipsy can help you get there in new and sexy ways. Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short, sexy audio stories designed by women for women. They bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and realistic characters. Discover stories about second chance romances, adventurous vacation flings, and hot and heavy hookups. And you've never heard celebrities like this before. Listen to stories voiced by ER Fightmaster, Luke Cook, and more. New content is released every week. So in between listening to your favorite stories again and again, you can always find something new to explore. I love Dipsy because it's super inclusive. They have so much to choose from. So whatever you're into or whoever you're into, I guarantee you they will have something for you. And they release new content every single week. So in between listening to your favorite stories again and again, there's always something new to explore. And they also have soothing sleep stories, wellness sessions, and sexy stories you can read. Let Dipsy be your go-to place to spice up your me time, explore your fantasies, relax and unwind, or heat things up with a partner. Listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash sesh. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash sesh. Dipsystories.com slash sesh. Well, you guys, you know what is not so good? George Santos. He's back in the news, back with another lie for us. He's giving us plenty of content. So much content. Shout, Shout out. out to you, George. Amazing. Amazing. So it is now time for this week's installment of CSI. All right, people. So news has come out that back in 2017, Mr. Georgie Porgy put in lies has faced charges of theft by deception in Pennsylvania for writing bad checks totaling more than $15,000. Yikes. Yep. And then get this. He used this money to buy puppies from dog breeders in Pennsylvania's Amish country, according to his lawyer friend, Tiffany Bugosine. Bugosine? Bugosine? We're not sure. Bugosine? Yeah. And she helped George with this theft case. And she only helped George informally um, since she could not formally represent him in Pennsylvania. So Tiffany and Pennsylvania prosecutors told CNN that those charges were later dismissed and completely removed from George's record. Now, we'll be the judge of that. That's right. Let's watch a little clip ski here. Told this Amish dairy farmer in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, will protect his identity. As this father of 10, who we will we call lied. Fred, <laughs> tells us the story of a man who came to his house a little over five years ago to buy puppies that Fred breeds as a side job. He seemed uncomfortable and nervous and fidgety. So that's when I started getting suspicious. His instinct was correct. These are nine checks from Jesus. November 2017. The name on each of puppies. them, oh, George puppies. Santos. <laughs> Lots of puppies. The checks to buy puppies. puppies obtained by CNN were written to Fred and other Amish dog breeders. They total more than $15,000. Fred says the man he then simply knew as George came with a female assistant and they cut their deal in this very room we're standing in, the milk house. <laughs> He says the man wanted two German shepherds. He says, okay, we're going to take that puppy and that puppy. And his assistant grabs the two puppies, takes them out the door, and he pulls out a check. I was like, oh no, is this guy going to pay me with a check? But then I was very suspicious. Because she, you told me before, she put the dogs in the car. <laughs> being this reporter. Right. Before it's they like, paid my job. <laughs> right. So you're suspicious because he's going to pay with a check and you don't right. take checks. And I told him I, I don't take checks. All I can take is cash. Mm -hmm. Well, he said, would you expect me to carry enough of cash to buy a bunch of puppies on a trip like this? I do not have cash. The only thing I can give you is a check. Well, I thought to myself, it looks like I'm done. You're stuck. I'm stuck. Because the dogs are already in the car. The dogs are in the car. You thought they pulled a fast one on you. Right. And then and it was obvious mm -hmm. to me by that time they probably pulled a fast one on me. So you said, <laughs> through the goodness of your heart, I take it, that you'll take the check. 
I said, I have decided a check is better than nothing. The goodness I'll give of it a try. Shut up. And the results of that try? The check bounced. The check bounced. Yeah, let's all remind you were charged bills. a fee yeah, too no. for a depositing a balanced check. Right. Have you gotten the money back? No. Have you heard from anybody about no. it? No. I love how they just had Fred Amish Farmer I know. as his title. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Which obviously this is a puppy mill and, you know, this guy... It was weird how he's like, the, out of the kindness of your heart. No, right. dude, for the cash. For the cash, bro. He's like, for the money, bitch. Yeah, he doesn't care about the puppies. Yeah. Um. So, Charlie actually came from an Amish puppy mill. Maggie did. Charlie oh, came from, right, right, I don't right. think they were, he was some puppy mill, but yeah, Maggie came from an Amish puppy mill of a, a warehouse of a thousand dogs in cages. Horrible conditions. The like Amish horrific. puppy mills are some of the worst yeah, out there. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think hers was from Missouri. Which George has always claimed to be this animal lover, this yeah, animal well, this advocate. Is, the story is so much worse. Okay. Yeah, it gets it gets way worse here. So November 13th, 2017, George Santos visited a puppy mill in Pennsylvania's Amish County trying to buy at least eight golden retriever puppies. Dude, why did you need that many? Um, he was he promised the puppy mill owner a wire transfer for more than five thousand dollars. The mill owner said he was there for more than an hour trying to convince him that it was sent. The mill owner said that he could see on his cell phone if the money had been transferred. He called his bank and was told no payment had been wired to his account. Surprise, surprise. Mm -hmm. So George then offered to take just four dogs and pay by check. George said he would come back with the cash for the rest of the puppies, but he never did. The mill owner told Washington Post that something inside me said, I just cannot trust him. And he was correct because the check bounced. And the mill owner said he called the police after the encounter. And this was back in 2017, like we mentioned. And it took nearly two years for authorities to locate George back in New York. And George was charged with theft by deception in November of 2017. Mm -hmm. So going back to George's lawyer friend, Tiffany, she said that he called her in a panic one day in February 2020 during his first run for Congress. And of course, he's flipping shit because this does not look good. Mm -mm. He told her that New York City law enforcement officials had informed him that he was wanted in Pennsylvania regarding bad checks and needed to report there immediately. And he was freaking shit. So he told Tiffany that the checks were from a checkbook that had been stolen from him. Oh, poor George. <laughs> so George sent her copies of the nine checks that were written for amounts totaling $15,000. Mm-hmm. To be specific, 15,125. Mm -hmm. And they were dated in November 2017. So Tiffany told police in 2020 that George was a victim of fraud and did not write these bad checks. She emailed a Pennsylvania state trooper who had been assigned to the case and said that George did not write the checks and that one of the four checkbooks he received from the bank disappeared in 2017. And he immediately called the bank had the checks canceled, and put stop pay orders on all the checks. He then later closed the account. In the email, Tiffany said George was not aware of the checks written to the dog breeders until after he was charged. She attached copies of the canceled checks showing what appeared to be differences in the signatures. Which if you um, look back yeah. on the clip we just watched, there are different, like his signatures don't look the same. And just where he wrote puppies, 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 puppies. it's all different Yeah, fonts. it's different. So I'm like... Maybe he was frauded. Just kidding. I don't believe it. No, no, he definitely wasn't. So Tiffany said George wanted to keep this case quiet, of course, because he was in the middle of his first congressional campaign. Tiffany told the trooper, George said, if this comes out, it will be a scandal. And a scandal it is. <laughs> so in November of 2021, George's charge was dismissed and his record was expunged. Mm -hmm. Tiffany has now changed her mind. She said she has since come to believe that George was behind the whole scheme, which prompted her to share her experience with reporters. Specifically, she said, too many coincidences. And knowing all of that, I wish I didn't even get involved. I wish he just would have gone and turned himself in on the warrant so they would have prosecuted. He has no credibility, not in my book, not to me. And I feel it is my duty and my obligation to warn people about him. Yikes. The mill owner whose complaint sparked the theft charge, is one of four dog breeders in Pennsylvania's Amish County who told the Washington Post that they've received bad checks in George's name that month. So he was like going on this whole dog purchasing scheme, yep. frauding all these Amish people. <laughs> That's nice. And three out of the four breeders that were interviewed by the Washington Post were not paid back and did not file a police report. The other five check recipients could not be reached. 
These breeders wanted to keep their identity private, so we're referring to them as breeder number one, two, three, etc. So breeder two said that George gave him a check for two German Shepherd puppies. And after the check bounced, the breeder said he tried to contact George by phone but couldn't reach him. Mm. Of course, he's ghosting. He said, I tried to reach him back numerous times but never got the answer. It's almost floors me that you tell me that this person is a member of Congress. People like this need to be stopped. Breeder number three said George claimed to own three pet stores in New York City and already had a carload of puppies when he arrived late that night. Obviously, he was going around buying these puppies, the breeder said. The breeder sold him an English cream golden retriever. Side note, such cute dogs. Yeah, very cute dogs. All these dogs are cute. All dogs are cute. Breeder number four could not say if George was for sure the buyer he received the bad check from because it was late at night and it had been confirmed that the date on the check matched the date that George bought the puppies. The breeder said he accepted a check for more than $2,000 for three or four Yorkshire Yorkshire Terriers. I always struggle with that word. Yorkshire. Yorkshire. Yorkies. Yorkies. The breeder said that when he went to the bank two days later, the check did not clear and he didn't call the police because he did not think it would make a difference, which probably wouldn't. No. Probably like bottom of their list, right? Yeah. And this is where it gets fucking wild, people. Mm-hmm. So at that time, George was running what he described as a pet rescue charity called Friends of Pets United or FOPU. <laughs> FOPU. FOPU held several puppy adoption events at Pet Oasis, which is a local chain on the Staten Island. On Staten Island. On the Staten Island. <laughs> <laughs> on Staten Island. And on November 16th, 2017, three days after the breeders were given bad checks, Pet Oasis advertised the next FOPU adoption event on their Instagram. And the photo showed golden retrievers, German shepherds, and a Yorkie. Me. So starting to really line up here, people. On November 24th, 2017, the store advertised another FOPU adoption event with photographs of dogs whose breeds also matched those taken from the Amish country two days earlier. Mm-hmm. So it's really not looking good for Georgie here. Staten Island resident Michelle Vazo said that she adopted an English cream golden retriever at one of FOPU's pet oasis events that year, paying the charity 300 or 400 bucks. And she said that George specifically told her at the time that the dogs had been rescued from an Amish puppy mill. That oh, shit pisses me off so bad. Wait, he stole them. And he tried to buy them. Yeah. Well, you know, he claims. It's yeah. like fucking ridiculous. So I guess he could try to make it sound like, oh, it's like a vigilante, you know, rescuing them. But you're not really, re- you're, no. you're financially supporting them still. But in George Twisted Mind, you know what I mean? It's so fucked. Oh my God, anyways. So oh, the, that's I said the F word. That was the first oh, time. Sorry, I made it this far. Sorry, folks. Well, in the name of puppies. That's right. The F word it is. It just has to come that's out. That's right. So the owner of Pet Oasis at the time said that the store did not share in any of the money that George took in and cut ties with him after a short period. When the store gave a check to George's charity, the cash check showed that the charity name had been crossed out and replaced with Anthony DeVolder. Another name that George goes by. There is $365,000 missing from his campaign filings. No one knows where it went. No one knows what it was used for. So, I mean, his ship is sinking. It's Uh, sinking fast because it's weighed down with all the lies. Dude, what are you doing? He's such an idiot. This dude needs to be fired. And we talked about last week how he... uh, bribed reporters with Dunkin' Donuts. I guess he also tried to bribe them with cupcakes yep. recently, rainbow cupcakes. Mm-hmm. He brought that's, them out. That's, that's right. These so are funny. guys in a little Tupperware. No one took a cupcake. I can't confirm that, but from what we from what heard. Seen, yeah. It doesn't look seen. like anyone took a cupcake. No one Although the, the cupcakes cup- looked good. I would have taken one. So good. Would you have from a liar like that? I don't know if I would take one from a liar like that's that. That's true. You Honestly, never know that. what he put in there. They, like He made them salty. Plus, I don't want to rat poison. Take his stupid cupcakes. Yeah, true. Dumb cupcakes. But I am a sucker for a cupcake. And they were rainbow stuff. They were really nice looking, not gonna lie. So yeah, we will keep you guys updated on Georgie's lies because (sighs) we know there's more. You know it's just like, we're just touching the surface here. This guy's got so many lies. I swear it's every week. Yeah. Oh yeah, literally every week. We we need to have his own segment, like an own little like theme (laughs) song for his ass. Seriously, we should. Terrible, terrible, terrible. (sighs) Terrible. Well... 
Anyways, that's a lot of our Congress members, unfortunately, in Senate and Honestly, all true. politics. Tons of liars on both sides. True. So great for us. Very excellent. Amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, anyway. Oh, boy. So I've talked about this before, but a few years ago, I was really struggling with anxiety and depression, and I didn't know where to turn. That's when I found ketamine treatments, and they completely changed my life. And I really mean that. My mental health has never been better since doing my ketamine treatments, and I recommend them to so many of my friends and loved ones. And I'm so excited that ketamine is becoming more accessible. Now you can get ketamine treatments at home. And MindBloom is the leader in at-home ketamine therapy, having safely helped thousands of people overcome their anxiety and depression. Ketamine works quickly and doesn't have the unpleasant side effects of traditional antidepressants. 89% reported improvements in their anxiety and depression after only two sessions. I really can't recommend ketamine therapy enough. Like I said, it was completely life-changing for me. And sometimes you just need something new to unlock your brain and have a new way of thinking about and seeing the world. Right now, MindBloom is offering our listeners $100 off your first six-session program when you sign up at mindbloom.com sesh and use promo code sesh. Take the first step and break free from your anxiety and depression with MindBloom. That's mindbloom.com sesh. Use promo code sesh. This is not a crime, technically, but this is pretty criminal, in my opinion. Yeah, this is horrible. I have some shit I need to say about this. Yeah, so this student but turned This was in, like found on Reddit, like through yeah. BuzzFeed. I don't, we don't even we don't know, know the when details, it happened. But like, we just wanted to comment on it because yeah. it's so absurd. Yeah. So this student turned in his assignment. Um, or actually, I don't know if it's uh, him or her. But this student turned in their assignment at midnight, and they turned it in at... That was due at midnight. Oh, yeah, due at midnight. It was turned in at 11.46 p.m., but their teacher marked it as late. That's such fucking bullshit. So they hit her up. They said, hello, Professor Blank. How are you? I am writing to you because there was a grading mistake from the assignment that was due on February 1st. It shows you marked 10 points off as a late penalty. However, as you can see on Canvas, I properly submitted the document in timely manner before the due date at 11.46 p.m. on January 31st, 2023. Let me know when you fix the grade. Thank you. And the professor responded. Would you like to read that? Sure. sure. <laughs> She's excited. Sure. <laughs> they say, hi, blank. I have just now checked and see that the assignment was submitted 13 minutes before the posted due date. However, you must understand that it was handed in on a last minute bas- basis, which is the reason why you received a late penalty. As a result, I will not be removing the late penalty deduction and would advise you to submit your work no less than an hour before the due date moving forward. This is the this biggest load of shit. Asshole. <laughs> Unbelievable. I would raise hell if oh. this was me. I'd be calling the dean, the head of the, that is the university. I don't know. fucking trash. Mine, okay, I don't know about you. The amount of times that something has been due at midnight and I turn that shit at 11.59 oh, yeah. p.m. Same. Well, and do it. You never know why. It's not always procrastination or doing something last minute. I mean, it's possible that they were even like making it as good as possible and using every ounce of time that they could. Mine was always procrastination, but yeah, and that's fine. (laughs) If that was the case here, that's fine too. It doesn't matter. It's still in before the due date, but maybe they were, you know, they had it done a day before, but they just forgot to turn it in until late. I mean, you never really know. And that is the most absurd thing I've ever seen. I would be livid. Dude, it's such bullshit. It should be in your stupid policies then that the due date is not a due date and that you require work to come in an hour before the due date or right. it's late. Well, they should they should have just changed because on Canvas, it says like do whatever, blah, blah. Like teachers can make whatever time it yeah. is. They should have just made it a different time yeah, and make it a bit earlier. It's such fucking bullshit. Oh, it pisses me off so bad. Like, that, what do you mean? It's it's not late. You had it a due date. There was no disclaimer of, by the way, if you don't turn it an hour before the due date says and you're getting deducted because you're, you know, cutting it too close or whatever. Were we able to figure out if this student ended up getting this reversed? I looked. There was no answer. No, there's like no information on it. Just people's oh, responses. Like, I people hope are they pissed. were able to. I hope that so is too. trash. That is such a low trash. To the trash. highest degree. Oh, my God. Pisses me off so bad. That's so bad. I've turned stuff in late before, like actually late. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes I would get deducted. Dude, this one time, I'll never forget it. I was in a philosophy class in my undergrad and we had like four papers and I remember reading his syllabus that 
there was like the late policy was there is no late policy. If it's late, you get a zero. That's it. And oh, wow. I somehow, I don't know how I did this because usually what I would do at the beginning of every semester is go through every syllabus, syllabi, and <laughs> write down the due dates in my calendar. Mm-hmm. And somehow I forgot to write the due date for the first paper. And I noticed like a day later that I, not only did I not turn the paper in, I forgot to write it because I didn't know what my stupid planner that Ooh. we had one do. And I freaked out because Yikes. I calculated my grade. And if I took a zero for that, the best I would have gotten was a C in the class. And I was like, this is so bad. I This is not like me. I should I couldn't even believe it. I like, called my mom crying and she's like, okay, what you need to do is write the paper, send it to him, send him an email. Don't give an excuse. Be like, it's an honest, honest mistake. I don't know what happened. Usually I'm really responsible, but I've messed up. Here's the paper. If you want to take it, I'd appreciate it. If not, you know, it's okay. And I did it. And he gave me like a 95 still. Oh, I was like shook as hell. He, that's a good professor. Yeah. I was so grateful. These professors on power trips piss me off. Pisses me off, man. Mm. Like, dude, he didn't even, this person didn't even do anything wrong. Seriously. Just, like, get fired for that. Seriously. Um, it's trash. Is that a spider? Oh, stop. Where? Where, where, where? where? What? You Are see, I like, by your cord? Warning, if you're wearing headphones, it's about to get real loud in here. What? Where? That fuzzy thing where your cord is. Look over here. Look cord. Right, no, like, right there. No, 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 you can only see it from this I side. I can't see. Right there. I'm using your mic now. Do you see that thing? What is that? That white thing with legs looking. There, on this side of the cord. Turn around. Ah! Ah! Sorry, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh my God. Are you sure? You just broke the mic. Yeah. Corelli! I'm sorry. Sorry. Anyways. Oh my God. That was horrific. That was a crime. Oh my God. That was so scary. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry, guys. Ooh, my heart rate's all up. That just broke your eardrums. <laughs> God damn. Okay, we are back. We have survived Spider Get In 2023. Everyone in the office heard us, apparently. <sighs> that really scared me. That really shook me to my core. Same. I'm all right. Headache. Getting my heart rate down. Anyways, Carly has an update, though, she found about George. <laughs> <laughs> it's been literally five seconds. We already found out something else about him. So, Georgie Porgy, he says that he graduated from Bar- Baruch, Baruch College. Mm. Sure. All right. Um, Rick, whatever. Whatever. With degrees in economics and finance in 2010. But he did not even attend that college. But even funnier. <laughs> this guy is fucking Hell awesome. Yeah. But what's literally the funniest thing is that he told multiple people that he was the star of the of the volleyball team. So after saying that he like was, you know, went to this college, that he was this huge star, he went into more detail um on this on this like radio show in 2020 saying that he attended this college on a volleyball scholarship. Hell yeah. And was part of the team that slayed Yale and, and Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, it says, quote unquote, slay. Slayed. Um, so he wasn't even on the team? No. He didn't, even go to he didn't go to college. He didn't go to what that school. What is wrong with this guy? And then he said he's, he, he could have played basketball, but went with volleyball because it was easier. Um, and then he sacrificed both knees and got a very and got a very nice replacement from playing volleyball, and because that's how serious he took the game. Shut up! Quote, quote, Shut up. I'm literally <laughs> quoting. It says, "Shut up." This is from Vanity Fair too. So yeah, and there's more. I mean, this is like, like this is a list of limes that he's done. Lies, lies that he's <laughs> limes, <Yeah>. limes, bro. <laughs> what is happening? Oh my god, this guy is a serial liar. What are you doing, good sir? Why are you why are you always lying? Pulse shooting. What did he say about the I, pulse shooting? I'm reading that right now. In an interview with this magazine, following his success bid for Congress, Santos claimed that he had lost four employees in the 2016 Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando. <gasps> this is surprising that it's actually not true. And that according oh to the God. Times, not one of the 49 victims appear to have worked for any of the companies Santos worked for. <gasps> wow. Shut up, dude. dude. This guy sucks. It's like he's just talking to talk like there's no- this no, he, ridiculous. Yeah, he's he literally just, shut his mouth. What oh. does it say? The Kevin I was just McCarthy say, impersonator? Yeah, so earlier this month, the Post reported that a staffer working for Santos, Santos election bid um, would call rich donors and pretend to be Representative oh, Kevin McCartney's chief of staff oh, to raise shut. money, seemingly confirming that this crazy story did actually happen. McCarthy's attorney told the outlet, when this issue came, out, came to our attention last year, I raised it with Santos' campaign and and felt it was resolved to, to our satisfaction. 
Um, while it's unclear if Santos knew about the trickery at this time, it's trickery. hard to believe that he didn't. Oh, oh come on. He God. he led the charge. Stop. That is so That's funny. That's insane. This guy has lied about everything. Like, just when you think there's not any more no, lies, lies possible, he's just oh, got more and more. Oh, I bet there's tons more shit that we haven't even figured out yet. <gasps> oh, well, oh, my God. This stay one? tuned for next week. Hold oh, on. There's, there's one more. more. Mugged on the way to delivering his rent check. <laughs> he, sw- he swears in a sworn statement that he was mugged while, attem- while attempting to deliver a check for rent for back rent owed to his queen's landlord. Shockingly, there is no record of this happening. Of course, he had back rent, first of all. And then yeah. he tries to lie about trying bugged. to get it to him. Sorry, I couldn't get you my rent Dude. check. Dude, this guy is literally oh like a fucking... God, this guy's a cartoon bro, character. What is happening? He is. Wow. That's incredible. America. Gotta love it. This is who we have? How did he get This is who we have. Like- I don't understand. Yeah, because he lied his way there, clearly. Oh, my God. I'm sure we're just scratching the surface for real. There's got to be so much more. Oh, yeah. So we'll see. Maybe next week we'll have another George segment. I think he's going to have to get his own segment at this point. I agree, honestly. He's going to have to get his own little, like, art. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, a little song, a little tune. Maybe his own merch at this point. Yeah. George Santos merch. (laughs) This mm. dude is a is a dog breeder. He's a, a very talented. He's a dog stealer. Dog stealer, yeah. <laughs> Charity stealer. He's a volleyball. He's a volleyball star. star. He <sighs> he was he only, he was in some Ponzi scheme. <laughs> this he's is been sto- he's been robbed. This man has been through it all. Oh, I'm Poor so George. excited for the ethics committee to go through everything Me and too. find all this be shit. Awesome. There's gonna be so much. It's probably like the dumbest things oh, that he yeah. spent money on. That's hilarious, honestly. You know <sighs> who else is a big liar though? Ooh, who else? Jennifer Shaw. Jen bum, bum. Shaw, baby. So we talked about Jen Shaw, mm, I don't know, like a month or so ago. Mm-hmm. Honestly, probably longer than that. Mm-hmm. She's going to jail. So if you don't know who Jen Shaw yeah. is, she is from the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. And yeah, we did a, a comprehensive deep dive into uh, Jen Shaw right. and her bullshit. But um, she was involved in a huge scam that yeah. um, was targeted at the elder population and disabled, disabled people. So. And I think people who are in uh, lower socioeconomic status mm-hmm. as well, I mm-hmm. think. She screwed a ton of people over. Yeah, the, she all of the um, of victim over. statements are really sad. And some new interviews have come out as well. If you search that on YouTube, it's, it's pretty shocking. But when we had first talked about this, I wasn't super aware of who she was because I had never seen the show. But right. now I am fully in baby i am mm-hmm. committed to the max i am like all the way in season three haven't finished it yet but mm. damn it is so good it's season three so is good. juicy it's so it good mm-hmm. so anyways um yeah she's she's in jail now folks on february yeah. 16th she went in to the brian fred fred brian <laughs> federal prison camp to serve her sentence of six and a half years folks yep and this is a very Chill. lax prison yeah. This it's, is a minimal security facility mm-hmm. um, in Texas. And in Bryan, Texas. And it serves 550 mm-hmm. total inmates. All of them are female. Um, it's 37 acres of a campus. And it's described as very easy going. It offers many services, including several mental health services, such as individual and group counseling, psychoeducational counseling, self-help services, and referrals to healthcare facilities for treatments of mental illness, which, by the way, I think every single person should have this. Yeah, it's disappointing that many people don't have access to mental health care or mm-hmm. physical health care, especially um, people who have committed nonviolent crimes. Like, yeah. why is this not just the standard for especially lower tiered crimes like that? Right. Yeah, it's really not OK, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, also, Elizabeth Holmes is in this prison. Well, no, she's going in oh, April. Sorry. Well, it's rumored she's, that she's going to go there. Right. Because sorry. they're saying that she's going to go to a prison camp in texas so it's, it's likely this one so she can hang out with jen maybe they can be scammers sell neighbors yeah go, come oh. up with a new scheme oh my together. god I just got one of my nails off sorry Congrats. really random but that's great progress love that anyways um supposedly she'll be forced to keep her cell in perfect condition which includes making her bed taking out the trash and mopping the floor and terrible. She, <laughs> yeah, terrible. How will she ever survive this? I know, for real. And Jen will have to share a bunk with another inmate, and she will also have access to commissary items such as toiletries, soup, quote unquote, <laughs> gourmet snacks like mm. ramen and pop tarts, that type of thing. Like mm-hmm. Fritos, Fritos, sure thing. But yeah. you know they're gonna get the gourmet brands of the ramen and stuff, like the good shit, like the top ramen. Um, and apparently just days before reporting to prison, she actually got a very quote unquote meaningful tattoo to honor her family. Um, 
she has it in like this script font and it basically says her husband's name and her son's name. Um, so Sharif Omar Sharif, because Sharif is her husband's name. Then she has two sons, Omar and Sharif Jr., mm. I guess. Um, so that's nice. And I guess her youngest son, Omar, also got a tattoo that has his mom's middle name, which I think is Kiki. Maybe it's Kiki. Kiki. I'm not sure. But yeah, um, I guess what's kind of interesting, though, is before she went into the prison, she did an interview with this person named Justin Paperney, who runs White Collar Advice, which is basically a crisis management firm that helps defenders prepare for their sentencing in prison um, and then also like prepares them for when they come home. So she shared two things that she is bringing to prison, uh, one being the Quran and one being a release plan that she put together with the consultants at the White Collar Advice. And this release plan focuses on how Jen will work on turning her sentence into a hopeful experience and lays out the steps for her life after prison. She says, quote, I'm going in with an 18-page release plan that has 11 different sections. I'm going to be journaling the experience, documenting everything. This is not only my roadmap, but what is going to hold me accountable for everything I told the judge in sentencing to make the victims whole. So she has... Well, let's a hope lot of, so. Like, yeah, plans, it sounds like. Maybe she really will change, find herself. I hope so. I mean, she's... See everything bad that she's done. She says she's going to repay, quote, every cent to her victims, she which better. mostly are over the age of 55. Mm -hmm. These poor people. God, I know, it's, it's so sad. horrible. She says she plans to spend um, my time waking up early, spending the early morning time writing and reading. I have built into my release plan the first 12 books of my reading list that I'll be sharing with everybody. So is she going to be able to like tweet and stuff? No. Um, her her lawyer, Ronald Richards, tweeted on the 17th, Jen Shaw is safely in custody at Brian Federal Prison Camp. Let's talk in 2029. And Jen released a statement on Instagram revealing that an administrator will be running her accounts oh. to keep the Shaw, Shaw squad updated during her sentence. Okay, we'll see how many people are left in the Shaw squad by 2029. Are you part of the Shaw squad? Mm, absolutely not. <laughs> This woman is so vile. I can't stand her. She is wild mm -hmm. on the show. She's horrible. Like, she is scary. I wouldn't want to deal with her. Oh, hell no. I agree. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. But yeah. I, I mean, obviously, I'm always for healing, mm -hmm. for making amends and becoming a better person. And I can only hope that she stays true to her words here. So. Do you think, because, okay, and this is. she has to get this rich ass jail too so stupid yeah of course sorry anyway i interrupted you so this is obviously a huge topic for another day but overall traditionally jail was made for people who are a threat to society of mm -hmm. some sort who would be dangerous if they were out and about right. now jen shaw what she did of course was horrific but it's i would say a white collar crime do you think that she should have had the opportunity to maybe not go to jail, but maybe be on house arrest and be able to work and therefore make money in order to pay back those victims rather than having to go to jail, which, yes, you can make money in jail. But it's, I mean, when you're working in jail, you're making like cents an hour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's really delaying, in my opinion, the time it's going to take to pay back these victims like yeah what i see are your what thoughts? you're saying but her job is to be on this show and she'd be making money by getting to go to glamorous events and run around and be a tv star so but what if she was like under house arrest and was able to somehow find a new job find that's a not business in scamming? yeah well yeah find a, find a business that's not in scamming but also get a job that's i guess it's just there's something like i see what you're saying totally and i don't know if it's the most productive way and I don't know if I had the right answer for this yeah. but at the same time it feels wrong to me that these victims would see her living and still I mean she's it's not the chalet she used to live in but she still lives in a nice ass oh, house yeah. has a nice ass life yeah and she just gets to like go on when these people are struggling now they're paycheck to paycheck their lives are in shambles and mm -hmm. she just gets to stay home and chill and yeah. be in her like juicy suit I mean no, I just don't get it but I do see what you're saying like is prison the most helpful way to pay them back because yeah I was reading they can make like 12 cents to a dollar or something per yeah. hour or should she have gotten the chance to i don't know like do a book deal or or a sh 
I don't but know. I just I see those as interview. rewards. But the but instead of it is hard because yeah, you're getting the reward of like more publicity. Yeah. But I'm saying like if you make a big book deal for millions of dollars or whatever it is, every single cent is going to the the victims, not to you. But then, you know, you're getting publicity out of that, which is further building your career. And once you've paid them back, right. it's furthering your own right. No, it's true. In the end, it's true. So I don't know. I don't know what the right answer for that is, too, because, I mean, the whole discussion around prison and who should be in prison, when is prison helpful is a very tough dis- discussion. And especially doing true crime, very yeah. torn on this issue. Because I've seen a lot of people that definitely deserve to be locked the of fuck course. up, you know. Um, but at the same time, is it always helpful? I don't know. I, I feel like in a lot of cases, it's not. I think that especially when you go to this point. It's like, what the hell? Well, this one at least gives you services that other ones don't to rehabilitate. I mean, she's able yeah. to take classes. There's and if a it, library. that was the standard for everyone, I'd be pro that. But when only the rich people get that, that's, that's what I'm saying. Frustrating. Which is fucked because a lot of times rich people are the ones that are not all the time, but a lot of times they're committing the white collar crimes. Whereas yeah. the people who are committing these violent crimes, like the whole idea of pr- like jail is supposed to be able to rehabilitate you, but you're not really being rehabilitated mm-hmm. if you're just sitting in a cell all the time. And mm-hmm. A lot of these resources that people claim to, you know, provide, like prisons claim to provide, like classes and therapy. A lot of people who have been to prison and been out of it have set, spoken themselves like that is a fucking lie. It takes forever to see a yeah. doctor. It takes forever mm-hmm. to see a counselor. It's really hard to get a job. So mm-hmm. I and I agree. Some people, I think, shouldn't even ha- be given the chance to be re- rehabilitated when you're yeah. doing such vile, disgusting things. But I think. More than not, I think people should have the yeah. chance to be rehabilitated and it's mm-hmm. not. I feel like they're not really being set up for that opportunity to when they're just sitting in jail and then, okay, your sentence is over. You get out. Now what? Right. How do you get a job? Which reminds me of a recent topic when we discussed Maddie Russo, the girl on TikTok who lied about having cancer. I think her arraignment is coming up soon here in March. Um, And we were discussing, she's facing up to 10 years. We were talking about what would actually be a proper sentence. Mm -hmm. Um, Should she even go to jail? I saw a lot of people commenting that she shouldn't because Mm -hmm. she clearly needs mental health help and her mental health would probably only get worse in prison. But at the same time, it's so, it's like you scammed all these people. You've hurt thousands of people who, you know, have cancer, other illnesses and, or people who have, there were so many comments on that from those of you who have lost loved ones to cancer and just Mm -hmm. how hurtful it was to you. What a slap in the face for someone to be making this up. So it's hard for me because I do get the argument of like, is she going to get any rehab in prison? She, is she going to improve at all? Probably not. But at the same time, I feel that... Does she even deserve that chance? Right. Because she... It's so, so it's so tough. Yeah. It really is. Um, I don't know. I have a lot of issues with the prison system. Me too. But yeah, there's just... It's like hard to think of the alternative. Right. Although I do think... It should be much more humane and that people should have basic human rights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I just saw God, I just saw this horrible story. Um, This guy, Anthony Don Mitchell, um, he was he died in prison and he arrived at the hospital with a body temperature of 72 degrees. And his family is now suing um, the prison and they believe that the guards put him naked in the freezer in the kitchen wow. and killed him. He had severe hypothermia. He froze to de- death while detained in Alabama jail. Um, oh my God. Which was crazy because this girl, I used to follow this girl, um, ni- I think it's Nitrab or Nitria B. Sorry, I'm totally botching this. I was not prepared for this discussion, but he was like one of their good friends who's in their, their wedding. And I saw him like in the vlogs and then they've been speaking out about this and Mm -hmm. how horrible it was. So it's just, it's just an example of how, you know, people who don't have the privilege that Jen Shaw has are not only just in a terrible situation and being treated like dirt, but also at risk being abused. Yeah. Of being abused of, of yeah, not even making it out alive. So I don't know. The prison discussion is a heavy one, but yeah, it is. I don't know how I fully feel on everything, but same. I think it needs to be discussed. So, yeah, let us know your thoughts, mm-hmm. you guys. Yeah. But goodbye, Shaw. Jen Shaw Chalet. Yeah. Remember Jen... she was making the merch? Yeah. This yeah. Bitch. She made... Oh, God, I'm cussing again. It's okay. I'm we can cuss. Girl. Okay. Well, this bitch. This bitch. She made merch that said, uh, 
What did it say? I don't Not remember. guilty. Yeah, something like that. This is before she pled guilty. Mm-hmm. Which so. is interesting to watch this whole show because even in season three, she's, you know, this is before the yeah. trial, at least where Wait I you get to the last episode, though. Oh, no. So it's take a turn. Oh. And then the reunion's been pretty. Is everyone's she at like, the wow. reunion? No. Okay. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Interesting. Anyway. Yeah, let us know your thoughts, folks. Let's wrap up today's episode with a little fun. Woo! We are going to try a trending pickle challenge. You folks know. We love our pickles. That we house. love pickles. This thing has been going around on TikTok for a while where you basically melt cheese in a pan and mm-hmm. it becomes like a little cheese tortilla. Yes. And then you put a pickle slice in and you wrap that bitch up, dip it in mm-hmm. ranch, and you mm-hmm. try it. So, oh, and not only that, we are also going to be trying the Vegemite yeah. with butter today because all of you Australians were like, it is criminal to not have butter with yeah. your Vegemite. It is not the same, even though we still like the Vegemite. People said it would be a million times better with butter. So I brought in sourdough bread and butter. We're going to try that. Which one should we do first? The butter? Bread uh, and butter? Yeah. Let's okay. do that first. So we'll take a little break here and we'll be right back. Not to get all parental, but it's time we had the talk, Sashis. You know, the one about the three-letter word that ends in X you'll probably experience a few times in your life. Not that one. I'm talking about tux. And when you need a tux, the best place to go to get one is the black tux. The Black Tux makes it super easy to get an on-trend, top-quality, guaranteed-to-fit tux without ever leaving your house. And here's how it works. Take the Black Tux Fit Quiz, pick the style you want to rock, and boom, your tux is delivered to your door 10 days before the day you need it. That's plenty of time to try it on and make sure it wears you well. And hey, if it doesn't fit quite right, say hello to the Black Tux Fit Guarantee. Order a better size within a day or two of receiving the less than great fitting one and they'll send another right away at no extra cost. And of course, if you prefer an in-store experience, the Black Tux has showrooms across the country. Their expert fit specialist will help you find the perfect style tux or suit and make sure it fits right. We actually have a company event coming up where everyone will be dressed up. And so I'm really excited because a lot of the guys will be using the Black Tux in order to get their perfect fit. I love the fact that the Black Tux offers such modern pieces. It's not that like old stuffy feeling of a tux that, you know, is traditional. It's very modern, super great quality and comfortable. And the Fit Quiz is so convenient to make sure that everyone gets something that fits and looks perfect on them. Rent or buy, the Black Tux is the best place to go when you need a tuxedo for a wedding or a special night. And right now, when you go to the blacktux.com slash sesh and use code sesh, you'll save $20 off your order. That's T-H-E-B-L-A-C-K-T-U-X dot com slash sesh, code sesh to save $20. The blacktux.com slash sesh, code sesh. Okay, folks, we have Vegemite and toasted buttered bread mm. this time. So we are very excited. Yes. Now, so remember, the key with Vegemite is to not go too insane with right. it. You got to do a little scrapes. Right, just little scrapes. Now, I'm going to go a little bit more than I did last time because I did really enjoy it. So I'm yes, going to do a I little more than I did last time. I really like even it's the smell so of it. so good. I'm so into Vegemite. I want to get some for my house. Mm. It's so good. You can easily get some. I think World Market will have it. Really? There's also Marmite. I've heard of Marmite too. People were commenting about that. So what is Marmite? Marmite is from the UK, maybe? Mm. You're taking a long time with the knife. Sorry, here, sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, I'm trying it. Can't, sorry, I can't wait for you. Can't wait for me, but you couldn't even give me the knife. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Is it better with butter? Does it elevate it? Because that's what everyone's saying. Mm-hmm. It's way better. It's really good. Mm. It has a strong flavor. Mm. I'm adding a little more than I did last time because I like this so much. Oh, my God. This, this is so good. It is really good. Much better. Even better with the butter? Mm-hmm. Better with butter. Better with butter. Everything's mm. better with butter. That's true. Delicious. Mmm. Mm. Oh my god. I so love good. Vegemite. Big fan. It's mm. really god, you Australians know what's up. Mm-hmm. Mm, really good. That's really good for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Help us with our wellness journey. That's right. <laughs> Weightlifting and Vegemite, folks. On sourdough bread with butter. <laughs> <laughs> mm, so good. Mm. I don't really have anything else to say about that. Cheers to the Australians. Shout out to his family. What the hell are you drinking over there? I'm sorry. I made myself a macchiato while we were, we were <laughs> waiting for the for the for the toast to toast. <laughs> a nice. macchiato. Mm. Mm. 
All right. Are we moving on to our cooking segment? Yeah. Yep. It is now time for Dinner Bell with Janelle. Mm. Yeah, she's going to come back. Called. So Janelle leads us in our cooking escapades. First up, you need a pan. Mm-hmm. Dirtier, the better. Yep. This came from my house. Look at this bitch. It's well, not too bad. We need one that's small enough. Small. Can I come clean to you about something, Kendall? Yeah, what did you do? So I think I used that pan one time when I was house sitting for oh, you. Oh, this is your fault. I think so. I am very okay. sorry. If that is my fault, I'm very sorry for that I pan. Care. I don't give a damn. I'm very sorry. Well, what what were you cooking in it? Was it worth it? Uh, yeah, I think I was cooking um chorizo. Worth it. Yep, it was it was Fine vegetarian chorizo tacos. I co-signed that. Okay, really FYI, the burner is going to be really hot. Really? Yeah. So I would. What do you mean? Like why it's a is burner? It, why is it going to be really hot? Because I've used that burner before. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's a monster. Yeah, it's just okay. Thanks for the heads be up. Be careful. Okay, so we have our burner on. Our pan is hot. We are going mm -hmm. to add a little butter to the bottom. Mm. Ooh, I Ooh. hear her. Let's because see. we want to make sure that the cheese does not stick. The mic almost went in. Okay, well I'm glad it didn't. I'm gonna take some footage here so we can have a top Do view. That. Wait, wait, wait. Let me get the camera. Now, basically, all you want to do, folks, is take yourself some dang cheese here and put it on. Oh, she's hot. Hold on, I'm going to turn it down hot. a little yeah. bit. It's a little hot. It's a little too hot. Oh, my God. If this fucking sets the alarm off, we are <laughs> SOL. No, there's no alarm up here. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a sprinkler right above our heads, so. We can have a nice shower. Don't even say that. Okay, so you just put some cheese on the pan. Yeah, you let the cheese get kind of um, toasted. Crispy. Yeah, it's getting toasted fast. We might want to work quick yeah. here. But you have to kind of get the cheese a little bit like browned almost mm -hmm. and like actually like crunchy. Yeah, exactly. So you want to let it chill for a bit because right now it's not going to hold. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. This is going to work, guys. Woohoo! So you let it get a little browned up here. And then, of course, you need the finest pickles, which we are using the boar's head pickles. This is the finest Listen, pickle in these town, are the folks. best tic yeah, tickles. <laughs> tickle, tickle my pickle, folks. <laughs> Size. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Very good. All right. So you put your should we let the cheese get a little more zesty? Mm. You think it's good? I think it's probably about good. Yeah. Okay. I should play on the safe side before it gets burned. Put your pickle on your cheese. Mm. And now you are to basically get the cheese up and around said pickle. We might have we might not have made the cheese big enough. Oh, this is actually pretty good. Yeah. It's, work. it's working very well. Mm. And then you take her and put her on a plate. Should we do another one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Listen to that, people. Does that sound good, Corelli? That sounds really nice. Please. Oh, yeah. Mm. Don't stop that. We love that. <laughs> folks, now, folks who work in an office, you should try this. Mm -hmm. Bring it to your office. Okay, mm -hmm. This is not working as well as the first And one. people recommend that you dip this in ranch to give you kind of like that fried pickle That's right. vibe. So I'm preparing a plate here for the producers. No, we should try that one. That one's pretty yeah. good. This one. <laughs> okay. Okay. That one's pretty. All right. It's time to try. Cheers. Wow. It was so much better than I thought it was going to be. It was phenomenal. Mm hmm. It's like restaurant quality. It does taste like restaurant quality fried pickles are better. Oh, no, my pickle fell out. Dude, I would order this up. I'd pay sure. money for this. This is delicious. Who thought of this? What a life hack. They deserve a fucking award. Mmm. Oh, my. Mm. It is so good. Oh, my. God. That is a 10 out of 10. Literally 10 out of 10 with the ranch. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh my god. That is so good. It's so good. Damn. All right, folks. I hope you guys like it as much as we do. <clears throat> yeah, I was gonna say it doesn't look as as good as it sounds. You guys made it sound. Mm. But so good. Yours isn't a little less crispy than ours. I'll I'll give you that. Do you think it's gonna not make make it taste bad? I don't know. Well about to find out. I would say no. It's probably just a little softer. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You like it? Mm hmm Good. Oh wow. wow. So good. Oh my God. Like, Wait, what really did you good. eat that on the rag? Yeah. I'm making this for myself. Oh, after yum. This. What Especially? would you give it out of 10? An eight. Okay. 
I I think if you put a little garlic powder too, a little garlic Mm. salt. We're gonna make some celery. So So good. My sister's gonna come try one too. All right, we are preparing one for my sister. Come in. Come in. Annalie needs to try them out as well. So this is my sister Annalie. If you have not seen her before, say what's up. Any other? Oh, what's good, y'all? I'm gonna have some pickles. Yeah, you are. Hey, yeah. This shit. Annalie and I fire. loved pickles growing up. We used to make pickle boats where we would carve the inside meat of the pickle out and just yeah. leave the skin and then eat the skin. And, and like, what was the point of it? I don't know. Like, that was a big it. Saturday night activity for us. Saturday night activity. Oh, yeah. Sugar water. Sugar yeah, water. that was very quiet. Cool. You just like literally drank sugar water? Yeah, we did. Like little butterflies. You guys did not need sugar water. Y'all had enough energy over yeah. that yeah, house. We were, we were lit. Yeah, we had a lit house. All right, that's pretty hot, so. Yeah, carefully. Wait a sec. Burn my face. Just well, okay. if it's too hot, then... No. Wait, come in. What do you think? Give us your That's honest opinion. Good. Honest opinion. It's good, right? It's giving, like, Cheesecake Factory, like... Mm. Aver- like, what is it? Better than a Appetizer. restaurant. Better than a restaurant. Who decided to make yeah, it? You want me to Who take that up? originally decided this? So we found this on TikTok. All oh, right, solid. so what do you give it out of 10? Like a 9 out of 10. That's mm. sweet. Because you need to cook it a little bit longer. Ah, okay. If you I'll take a critique. Yeah, take a critique, Chef Janelle. Yes, okay. thank you, Judge. Yes, dinner bell with Janelle right mm-hmm. now. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was my first try at it, so. Yeah, not too bad. It is yeah, what it is. Job. Yeah. Very good. It's just steaming a lot. Someone called 911. Oh, Anyways, before we light this bitch on fire for the second time mm-hmm. on this show, in mm-hmm. fact, I just watched that old clip of us lighting oh, the fire. That was a good time. That was times. a good time. That was a great time. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll insert. Yeah. <laughs> Well, people, it's been real fun hanging out with y'all. It sure has. Um, we will be back with more shenanigans next week on the sesh. But until then, you should go and subscribe. Oh, and okay. leave a review. Yep, and those, download our too. show. Yeah, that helps a lot. Check out our merch as well. Oh, by the way, mm. pickle merch. Um, oh yeah, we've only got eleven. We have eleven three XL. <laughs> so if you want pickle merch, you better jump on that now, mm-hmm. folks. But anyways, that's gonna be it for this week. We have to go clean up. And we'll Mm -hmm. see you on the next session. But until then, keep Keep it it fresh. fresh.